All right, bitches, so we're here for the next episode of Dragon Ball Super. This is episode 32, and this one is The Match Begins. Everyone head to the Nameless Planet, so we're getting into this tournament. Hopefully, the show can start really getting its ass into some interesting shit. All right, so the, op the episode opens up. With, uh, we see a quick shot of Dende and Mr. Popo are playing tennis. Which I actually think is kind of interesting that it's showing that, like, you know, the god of Earth and his attendant, I guess is what we can call Mr. Popo. Like, some of the things they do on their spare time, since, you know, they're just, you know, on the lookout, constantly looking over Earth. I actually thought that was kind of fascinating. Then it cuts into the, you know, freshly made hyperbolic time chamber, which is called the Room of Spirit and Time in Japanese, of course. Um, Goku and Vegeta are training in there. Um, I, I guess it's, you know, it's basically said that they end up training in there for three years, which is crazy because at this point, like, you know, Goku and Vegeta, like, their ages are have got to be starting to get up there. Like, I could calculate for sure, like, how old they both are. But I know, like, um, Goku is a lot younger because all the years that he was dead, those count as, you know, you know, basically those weren't years that he was alive. So, like, in it, uh, Goku, like, while they're having their little talk in the hyperbolic time chamber, says to Vegeta, like, you know, you said our bodies uh, could remain young until we're 80 in terms of to keep fighting. So I guess what that means is... They'll probably say generally the same as they are now, and then probably once they hit age 80 is when the aging process will probably, like, rapidly accelerate. Maybe something along the lines of, uh, Solid Snake in the Metal Gear Solid universe, how he just, you know, becomes Old Snake basically overnight. Looks like the Saiyans might have something similar. Now, Goku, I believe Goku is 24 at the start of Dragon Ball Z. Then he's basically dead for a whole year, so, you know, he doesn't, you know, gain an extra uh, year of age there, and then the Frieza events happen, and then he becomes 27, no, then he's 25 when Trunks arrives, and then he's 28 during the events of the Cell Saga, so, you know, during the Cell and Android Sagas, he's gonna be 28, and then the seven years that pass till the Boo Saga, you know, even though Goku is living that, technically he's dead, so his body's not aging. I, I guess that's never been confirmed. Like, when the dragon wishes you back, does he wish you back, like, at the age you were when you died? Or that that must be what it has to be. So, you know, Goku is probably somewhere around, like, 30, 31. Well, okay, I did forget the year he spends in the hyperbolic time chamber. During the uh, Cell Saga. So that will push him up to 29. And then there's been two, three years past since the end of the Kid Buu Saga. So yeah, Goku is probably somewhere between 30 to 33-ish. If uh, the time he spent dead doesn't count. Uh, Vegeta, of course, is going to have... I think Vegeta's five years older than Goku? Or it might be four and then, of course, those seven years uh, after the Cell Saga, Vegeta was alive for those seven. So, you know, Vegeta has almost, you know, at over a decade on Goku in terms of how long he's been alive. Now, of course, while they're training in there, like, they do kind of confirm to each other that training with each other is the best. Like, Goku says, like, when I train with you, it just confirms to me what all my weaknesses are. And Vegeta thinks to himself, like, damn, I was about to say the exact same thing. So I do like seeing that mutual respect between Goku and Vegeta. And Vegeta, in his thoughts, further notes just how much pow more powerful they're becoming. So even though before Vegeta said the results of their training would be very, very minimal, you know, right here, he's kind of thinking, like, oh shit, like, we're actually getting a lot stronger. I can feel our growth. They have some further discussions about Monica and the Universe 6 fighters, and then the scene switches over to a uh, Capsule Corporation, where we see Whis preparing um, some sort of cube that everyone is able to enter so that they're, you know, they'll be able to have atmosphere and breathe during the uh, travel to the Nameless Planet, you know, with uh, Whis's super fast, uh, you know, travel, whatever it is that you want to call it. 
uh, we see a couple of characters in our, our arrive start to go in there. Uh, Jacko shows up with uh, what looks to be a tentacle monster who is known as the Galactic King. So, I, I mean, he's the king of the universe, but, you know, I guess that doesn't really mean much. You know, uh, Jacko even says, like, yeah, they're not surprised to meet you because, you know, they're friends of the gods. So, <laughs> um, but then it's hilarious because then Goku and Vegeta show up. And, of course, you know, Goku is always late. And Goku and Vegeta both have full beards, which is crazy, but it does make sense. You know, having been in the, the hyperbolic time chamber for three years, they're able to shave. I mean, this does bring into question, you know, previously, like, Vegeta and them, they would leave the hyperbolic time chamber. They didn't have full beards. I guess they, you know, Goku and Vegeta... And, you know, thinking of Trunks back then, although Trunks was young enough, what was uh, Future Trunks, like 17, that he's probably not able to grow a full, full beard. There's probably, uh, like, a place to shave in the hyperbolic time chamber, because you do see a scene of Goku and Gohan taking a bath in there. But Bulma and Whis uh, make Goku and Vegeta take a bath, because uh, they smell, and when they get out of it, they, you know, arrive, and they uh, are clean-shaven now. So that was, I guess, like an interesting little thing just to show like, hey, remember, the Saiyans can grow beards, but we did already know that because King Vegeta had a goatee. So it's like, yeah, all right. Uh, and then it's funny because Krillin comes running back and Goku's like, oh, Krillin, were you pooping? And <laughs> it's like just a little line like that it does make me laugh. Not so much because, you know, it's a <laughs> Goku being ridiculous, but it does bring me back to Dragon Ball. Like, just Goku's, uh, how naive he is. So, that's, that's funny. Now, after everyone's ready to go, they actually head over to Beerus' planet, where the team meets up with Monica, who, you know, is basically the strongest person Beerus has ever fought. And he looks rather dumb. Like, he has a... He's, like, small, red, and as Go when Goku starts talking to him, it's revealed that his name means Big Nipples because he has fucking gigantic, you know, laser rock nipples. And this is... It's funny, because Vegeta and Piccolo are talking, and it's like, wow, he doesn't look like much. And Goku leans in, and he's like, but it's always that way. And it's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, Frieza's final form is smaller. Cell's final form was also smaller you know, <laughs> such and such type thing always seems to happen. Now, Goku, of course, always wants to test uh, strength of people who say they're strong. You know, think back to when old Kai first appeared in Dragon Ball Z and said, you know, he was sealed and he was so strong and Goku shot an energy blast at him. Like, so here, Goku cocks back and punches Monica, and Monica takes it full blast and he's got, like, tears in his eyes, but... He still did, like, just take a full-on punch from Goku. Now, the thing that's very interesting about this is that it's very unclear, like, is Monica really as strong as Monica's being hyped up to be right now? Or is he weak? Like, what is going on? What's the gimmick? Beerus is very confident in his power. I remember the line we stated a couple episodes where he wasn't so sure that this is a good idea and Beerus said he'd handle it. So right now there's a big question mark on what's going on with Monica. I'm not sure if I want to believe that he's actually stronger than Goku. If he is so, I would guess he might have some sort of transformation into a stronger, cooler looking form with a lot of power. I could definitely see that happening. So they get back on the cube and they fly over towards the nameless planet. Uh, Chi-Chi grills some meat, you know, during the trip because it takes several hours. And, you know, Vegeta and Goku are pigging out because they hadn't had good food in a, a couple years. And Goku offers Monica some, but Monica says that he doesn't eat very much meat. And you do see a shot of Piccolo kind of sizing him up. Uh, Piccolo, remember, the Namekians also don't need to eat. They only need to drink water. So I wonder if there's some sort of uh, similar thing with that. I gotta imagine the Namekians, they don't have to eat. They must take in a lot of nutrients from the sun, similar to plants. Because if you guys remember, planet Namek had... Oh, fuck. I I remember I forgot this before and was talking about it, and then someone corrected it, and then I just watched the episode and all that shit. 
It's like, Planet Namek has like three suns or six suns or something like that, so it's never night there. So it would make sense if Namekians got nutrients from the sun. But Monica must get nutrients from some other way. And this also does point out the interesting thing is, don't forget in the Dragon Ball universe that they can put anything into capsules. So that's why, like, Chi-Chi was able to bring a full-on, you know, grill or oven and start cooking up a storm while they're, you know, flying through space here. So they arrive at the Nameless Planet, and you get a good look at the Super Dragon Balls. Everyone is very shocked about them. Uh, we didn't get any talk of finding the seventh Super Dragon Ball, and everyone is very surprised to see it. So I guess we gotta assume that as of now, there's only the six Super Dragon Balls, and they'll collect the seventh later. But uh, they kind of get a look of, you know, the arena and everything, and everyone is introduced to Champa. Beerus is not really, you know, satisfied with the quality of the seats that, uh, you know, Vados created, so Beerus has Whis create better seats for everyone. Then also, Beerus kind of confronts Champa about the fact that he was coming into Universe 7 to collect some of the Super Dragon Balls, and Champa kind of, like, you know, brushes him off, like, no, no, no. And then once Bulma says it as well, Champa realizes he was caught. But Beerus says that since Champa is his brother, he'll forgive him, which is interesting, so they are confirmed as brothers. Now, at this point, all of the fighters from Universe 6 and 7 uh, fly off to take their written tests that Vegeta suggested as per the rules. Now, we don't yet get a look at the uh, Universe 6 contestants, but then, uh, just as they're flying over, Goku gets called, you know, by someone, and it's actually Supreme Kai, Old Kai, and Kabito. So, uh, Kabito Kai, his fusion was undone, which, so I'm getting prepared, I'm, I'm getting prepared, you know, I'm, I'm writing in my notes, like, okay, I'm about to go off again, they're fucking with me some more, hyperbolic time chamber, you know, doing all these wishes with the dragon, I'm not liking this, but then, something about this, of all the changes, you know, Bulma having a sister, uh, Supreme Kai just says, like, yeah, we made a wish to the Namekian dragon to separate because the fusion was permanent. Uh, we just felt, you know, kind of weird in that form. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? That does kind of make sense. Because that was an accident that they fused together in the first place. And, you know, old Kai didn't tell them that they could, you know, separate with the Dragon Balls. Because if you guys remember, he was looking down on the use of the Dragon Balls at all. Like, he didn't like it. You know, Goku suggested, you know, using the Dragon Balls, and old Kai was like, huh, you just fix all our problems with the Dragon Balls, huh? So, I, I kind of actually, like, this makes sense to me. So, they split apart, and now we've got Kabito and Supreme Kai and old Kai. Uh, I was thinking maybe before, when Goku couldn't sense Kabito Kai's energy, it was to set up a villain, but it looks like it was just, uh, you know, kind of like foreshadowing of the fact that they're split apart. I wonder if there's going to be some reason that they did this in the future, but for now, it's it's kind of neat. Uh, one thing that was never confirmed, I don't remember... Oh boy, maybe it was in Dragon Ball GT. It's been a while since I've watched GT. I should, I should really watch Dragon Ball GT again to get my knowledge of that on par, because I know, like, every detail of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, like, pretty much to the T. But, can Kabito Kai, could he heal... Because remember, Kabito can heal similar to Dende. I can't remember if Kabito Kai can or not. He might have healed Goku at one point or another in GT. I'm going to I'm gonna con uh, you know reconfirm that. But anyway, we also see the Universe 6, uh, you know, Kaioshins as they're called, or Supreme Kais. And, you know, they, they look kind of similar. And they are shocked that, uh, you know, the Universe 7 Supreme Kais, which of course is the universe, you know, Goku and everyone's from... They are surprised that uh, those Supreme Kais are friends with, you know, uh, humans or, you know, just normal people. Alright, so then at that point, Goku's called back over to the group and they fly up to the, uh, you know, the platform where the written test has taken place. And here we get a good look at all of the Universe 6 contestants. One of them is like a big yellow bearish looking guy. The other is like a robot. One is, uh, what is, turns out to be, uh, Saiyan. He looks to be a small Saiyan child. 
uh, Champa did say in a previous episode that he wanted a Saiyan on the team. Then we also get a shot of what looks to be Frieza, you know, a, a Frieza type character of Universe 6. And then the last guy kind of looks like a combination of Cell and Frieza to me. Like, he looks like a purple combo of Final Form Frieza and Final Form Cell. Uh, those are the five fighters for Universe 6. And uh, Goku and Vegeta, they have a little bit of a discussion with this Saiyan. He hasn't been given a name quite yet, but uh, they start talking with him. And he reveals that he's from Planet Saddle, which uh, Vegeta is shocked that that's still around. So clearly, that was the Saiyan's original planet. Because if you guys remember, uh, Planet Vegeta, which was originally Planet Plant, you know, that the Tuffles had, the Saiyans arrived there to take that over. That wasn't their home planet. That was just a planet that they sort of adopted. Uh, and... You know, with this Saiyan, they have discussions, you know, he talks about how, you know, the Saiyans of his universe are a warrior race, but, like, he's kind of appalled when Vegeta mentions that they had stolen planets and stuff. But, you know, he, he seems like a good guy. He says that the Saiyans of Universe 6 are still a warrior race, but they're contracted by, uh, you know, other organizations and planets to fight evil. Not necessarily, you know, contracted by organizations to steal planets and such. Vegeta really uh, seems to be pleased to meet this Saiyan. And uh, he does ask him if in the future uh, he could take Vegeta to, you know, Planet Saddle. And the Saiyan kind of, uh, like, at first he seems a little suspicious. But Vegeta's like, don't worry, like, we don't steal planets anymore. We're not like that anymore. And the young Saiyan is like, okay, he agrees. And then Vegeta's like, but I'm not going to hold back in our match. And the Saiyan agrees. So judging by the way Vegeta and the Saiyan are talking and, you know, Vegeta has all the history of the Saiyans and whatnot, I would say it's probably a pretty safe bet that Vegeta's going to end up fighting this guy. It's just this is, you know, this is just a scene that they wouldn't put in here unless they were setting up a future battle. Now, at this point, they start taking the uh, written test. And they have 10 minutes to answer some questions. And you see, like, Goku is struggling. And, you know, it, whatever. It, it's a comical scene. Kind of reminds me of uh, that one scene at the beginning of Naruto. But after the scene is done, Boo actually failed the written test. It looks like he fell asleep. And Goku's like, yeah, once he falls asleep, he can never wake up. So that's it. Like, Boo is not eligible to be on the, uh, you know, Universe 7 fighting team. And it's funny, because Vegeta originally did say, yeah, I want a written test, because I don't want any monsters who are too dumb to understand the rules to fight. And it's like, yep, well, Fat Boo does qualify under that criteria. Then at that point, uh, Whis tells Beerus to determine the order for the fighting team. Now he says, since Monica is the team ace, Monica is going to go last. And then he has Goku, Piccolo, and Vegeta determine who's going to go next with a game of rock, paper, scissors. Then, um, like, a tournament referee shows up on the ring, and he introduces a singer who's going to sing the universe anthem. And it's funny, because, like, everyone is like, oh, okay, like, everyone gets kind of, like, excited. And <laughs> the song is, the universe is vast. And then it just ends, and <laughs> it's a funny little anime moment. I actually enjoyed that quite a bit. But then um, they're prepared to start the first match. And from Universe 6, we have Botamo. He's the large uh, yellow-looking bear. That's what Goku says. That one looks like a bear. And then from Universe 7, the first one up is Goku. Goku seems to win at Rock, Paper, Scissors an awful, awful lot. Because if you remember, uh, Goku def he won against Vegeta when they were going to fight Kid Buu. Although... Vegeta won in Bobbity's spaceship, huh? Because that's why he got to fight Pui Pui first. Okay, but anyway. So the episode ends, you know, with Goku and Botamo about to fight the uh, first match of this little tournament here. And then the preview for the next episode uh, just shows, you know, a little bit of fighting between Goku and Botamo. And we do see a couple shots of Super Saiyan Goku, which is interesting for two reasons. One that uh, Goku's fighting someone strong enough to get him to go Super Saiyan. Two, it's also interesting to confirm 
that it looks like Goku and Vegeta, they can go Super Saiyan Blue, but it doesn't replace their Super Saiyan form. Looks like they can pick and go to any of the Super Saiyan forms they want. Probably just the one exception would be the red Super Saiyan God form. I'm guessing they can't just transform into that, but all the other forms shown they can transform into. So, okay, I'm starting to get excited. This episode was pretty good. This has been a lot better than a lot of the, the you know, the past uh, 15 episodes, I'd almost have to say. I, I wasn't really enjoying the Resurrection of Frieza stuff as much as I would have liked. But, you know, now we're getting into some interesting shit, so now I'm starting to get really hyped.